Hello. She says, sign your name, and the pen won't work, and our eyes meet, and we share a moment. In the waiting area, there's a scuffle, and men cough and shuffle, but I don't care, because my name on her lips sounds like an aria, and when she checks my form, there's no me, there's just us, because I'm in love with the girl at the job centre plus. Is it the ink stains on her fingers? Is it the tired look of abject disdain in her eyes? Is it the way she cradles the date stamp in her hands that makes me want her to tie me up with that little pile of rubber bands that makes me keep a diary for her every two weeks with all the things I've done? Oh, it's so hurtful and unpleasing love in a time of quantitative easing. It's so sordid and shaming. I'd even shot my neighbours to us but none of them are claiming. But then, oh then, it's a sad day when I get a job and all my dreams turn to dust. And it's goodbye to the girl down the job centre plus. Thanks. Yeah. Um, back in the days when I did have a job, um, I had uh, this manager who um, insisted on using various types of business bullshit speak and uh, this is a tribute to him, it's called Blue Sky Thinker. I, the above sign, declare myself to be a man. I'm a man with a mission. I'm a man with a mission statement. I got this commitment to the realisation of core goals, the actualisation of key strategies in work, in friendship, love and life. The town's got a mission statement. The pub, the bank, the school, the prison, the greasy spoon, calf and the knocking shop, they've all got one. The Siemens mission has a mission statement. And I have mine. I keep it with the sandwiches in my desk. My marriage spared out a mission statement. I got a focus group to draw it up. But now, for some reason, I live alone. She said I never hit my performance targets and my outcomes fell consistently, disappointingly, short. She said she never even appreciated my transferable skills. I thought all the ladies loved my transferable skills, but no. And so, I am a man. I'm a man on a weekend. I'm a man on a weekend conference, conceptualising the paradigm thus. Sorted in an off-peak hotel. I've got spare cash for an escort. I've got a magazine full of cheap porn. And I'm sat in the meeting room and I'm spellbound by the endless rotation of talk around the table, turning on itself on an endless wordy, sweaty frenzy while my desires go viral, while I market my dreams to myself. But there's something vibrant about this business world, something vital and visceral, red in tooth and claw, like raw meat tied to the tail of dog, a muted dog that chases its tail and yucks when it bites down on its arse, while I dream my way across this blue sky and sign my statement. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Finish now with another longish one. It's a uh, tribute to the morning after the night before, which we've probably all experienced at some point. A man wakes up at a party with toilet paper stuck to his face. He realises to his horror that this toilet paper has been used heavily by someone with a serious bowel disorder. Everyone's left. Perhaps it was something he said he can't remember. He thinks back over all the parts of his life that he can remember and decides, yes, it probably was something he said. He's lay half on the sofa, half on the floor, and he can't work out which half is which. He doesn't know whose party this was. He doesn't know whose flat this is. He doesn't know which town this flat is in. It's one of those nights where the darkness is like a tramp's dog's breath. Well, he mind sweeps his way through the half drunk drinks. There's one with lipstick on the side, and another with a floating cigarette end spinning like a compass needle, and then another, a milky white blob of fluid, human in origin, hangs suspended in the cheeky vento. He hopes this blob is nothing more sinister than Qatar. 
it slips down like an oyster. It goes over the window, it spits at the glass, and it makes a pattern like entrails, and he reads his future there. The drugs have turned cold in his veins, and he looks out to where the quays are pulse of the towns blinks on the bruised blue hillsides, and he thinks of better lives being lived out there. Well, the sun rises, and it comes onto him like a sickly gimp, and he lets the dawn suck him out to the street. It's one of those mornings where the carrion birds call your name as horses in the treetops and the hooks of the sky hover over blank-eyed houses. His blood sugar is crashing, catastrophic, and he's craving something carbonated and sweet. And then he sees it. He cries out, salvation in a heartbeat, civilization in a tap, redemption in a Coca-Cola vending machine. With a gluey mix of sugar and caffeine, it relights the dormant booze in his gut, and he's dancing down the roads painted with lights between beneath the dawn chorus, and he's screaming and singing exultant, and life is ecstatic. But then he stumbles over and vomits into a hedge. And that, my friends, is the sum total of worldly bliss. It lies in a strand of sick, dropping off a hawthorn branch onto a garden gnome, where it glistens in the early life. Cheers.